Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Martha from Martha Is. Today's video is all about all of the books that I read in January. I am kind of swinging between thinking that January seemed to be never ending um, and also thinking how are we already in February? Life goes by too quickly. Trying not to have an existential crisis. Anyway, let's just move on. Let's not think about that. So um, yes, so let's crack on. So I read nine books in January um, and started to that I stopped or DNF'd um, because I am pretty committed to just stopping books that I'm not enjoying. Um, so I'll crack on with those. So the ones I DNF'd, so one of them I have on my Kindle was David, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I decided that because the new film was coming out, A Personal History of David Copperfield with Dev Patel, in uh, 24th of January it was out so I decided oh yeah okay I'll read the book first because I really suck at reading books after I've already seen the film so I thought right I have it I'm gonna read it started it and my Kindle was basically trolling me and this is this is not the first time this has happened my Kindle was basically trolling me because the book if you look on Goodreads it says that David Copperfield is like 800 pages but the Kindle version was saying it was something like three or four hundred so I'm thinking perfectly manageable I start reading and it takes me an age to get to page 10 and I'm a I'm a quick reader so this was stressing me out and I realized it's because it's one of those like free kindle books you can download off Amazon with the classics and I think what they did was they basically converted like a gigantic version of David Copperfield <laughs> So that then basically your average page is like that big instead of that big, which is why it was taking me so long to just read 10 pages. And at that point, I just thought, this is fine. Like it's more readable than I expected Dickens to be because I've not read any Dickens. But I'm just angry because it's taking me so long just to get to 10 pages. So no, none of that. And I was definitely not going to get through 800 normal size pages before the 24th of January. So I gave up on that. The second ones that didn't really work for me was this one. So this is um, David Mogo God Hunter. So I got this in a Heady Mix subscription, um, which was themed by about Afrofuturism. And um, so this is essentially, it's kind of, it's a bit like a fantasy sort of dystopia book. And the main character, David Mogo, he's a demigod and a god hunter. And he gets sent on this mission to hunt down two very powerful gods um, to be delivered to a wizard who obviously wants them for nefarious means and I was kind of really into it like I liked um I liked the main character and I was it was set in a sort of yeah kind of fantasy dystopian Lagos I really sort of liked that um I love anything to do with kind of gods and mythology and all of that stuff what didn't work for me was that I found that there's actually quite a lot of action which is like front weighted so I made it about a third of the way through and a lot of the action is front weighted so then I kind of thought well where is this where is this gonna go like it just sort of keeps going like there was sort of incidents which I kind of would have expected to be at least halfway through the book or to even be like the main climax and so there was just kind of so much that I kind of thought well yeah, I don't really know how you're going to build on this. And I found myself putting it down and just not really being particularly motivated to pick it back up. So this one I DNF, not because it was a bad book. Um, and I would definitely encourage people to try it if you like fantasy, if you like mythology, any of that. Um, definitely try it. It just didn't really work for me. So those are the two that I DNF'd. So then we have the ones I gave three stars. There's this one, which is called How to Balance Your Life. I'm not really a fan of the kind of self-help type genre, but I kind of bought this. I was also supposed to be on a book buying ban in January, which I was largely successful. I bought this kind of in a moment of weakness in a book, in a shop near my office, um, which always has kind of sort of interesting books and stationery and other things. And I was feeling like my mental health has been a bit up and down this month. And I kind of thought, okay, I'm just, I, this appeals to me. I'm just going to try it. And it's a nice book. It's um, got lots of sort of like um, really nice sort of photography. So there's like food photography. Um, and you've got like kind of artwork. So it's kind of a nice, it's a nice sort of book. So it goes through like ways in which you can kind of balance yourself from things that you're eating and um, things that you're drinking you know trying to kind of like so it has like recipes for mocktails for example which I thought looks quite interesting um and then 
like a bit of exercise so it gives you an idea of like some stretches you can do it's got little bits of things like mindfulness um so there's quite a lot in here it's also i suppose sort of um quite superficial um not like not i don't know if superficial is the right way so it's kind of like top layer as in it's not going down into detail of any of the things so it's just literally giving you a taster of each of those things so that's why i gave it three stars i think it's quite good i think i quite sort of i might like refer to it like i said some interesting mocktail recipes and some of those stretches and things like that um but it's not kind of revolutionized me and what i was i suppose looking for in that moment um, so the next one I have is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. So this is a collection of essays. Um, Audre Lorde is quite sort of um, revered uh, in the world of feminism and intersectional feminism as a, a black lesbian feminist. And I've never read any Audre Lorde before. So I got a trial subscription to Scribd, which is um, a platform where you can get audiobooks and uh, e-books. And you just pay like a monthly fee um, and you can just read and listen to as many as you like. So I was trying that and I was listening. And so I actually listened to Sister Outsider, even though it's on my TBR, on my shelf. Um, and I found actually the audio, it really wasn't very good, which I know kind of impacted my enjoyment of the book. Um, her voice was quite robotic and the, the audiobook itself, none of the chapters had names and sometimes like a new essay would start in the middle of a chapter and with books of essays I try to kind of like read one and then stop and go read something else and then come back to it so that the essays don't all merge in my head and that made that very difficult to do um like I had to kind of wikipedia the the essay titles to listen out for them when I didn't have the the physical book on me so that definitely impacted it and obviously um you know with any sort of collection you get some you like and some you don't um, so I think that's also how I kind of netted out on a three star review. There's definitely some really impactful essays in there, particularly around, um, you know, being a woman, being a black woman, um, you know, and that whole kind of area of feeling excluded from the feminism movement, you know, because it was being dominated by white feminists, like all of that kind of stuff I found really, really interesting. And then there are some other stuff that I just, like, just didn't resonate with me at all. So, um, yeah, mixed. The next one that I gave, I think three and a half stars, um, or three, can't remember, was Convenience Store Woman um, by Sayaka Murata. So I feel like this was one that was a little bit hyped up actually, like a lot of people um, picked it up last year and said it was really kind of quirky and different and fun. Um, so I suppose I had did have kind of elevated expectations going into this. I did enjoy it, um, I did think it was, it was good. Um, so it's about a woman who is... Um, I suppose she feels quite different. She feels like an outsider because she can't really sort of connect in a social way to people. And so she finds herself a job um, in a convenience store. And that just gives her this really kind of comfortable sense of routine that she um, becomes quite fixated on. So she doesn't want to leave the convenience store. So she stays there for years, whereas other people obviously come and go. And her family, there's a lot of expectations for her to be, you know, why are you still working at the convenience store? Why aren't you finding a husband? And things like that. So it made some interesting points about expectations on people, particularly in this society, to be, um, yeah, to be getting married and doing all of those things and fitting in. So there's some really interesting points around there. Um, it just sort of didn't blow me away, but I quite liked it. So moving on to the four star ratings. Um, or have I got another? No, I've got another three and a half. Three and a half stars, here we are. So this is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. So this was published um, at the start of the month, start of January. And this was um, an advanced copy that I received as part of the Bookstagram of Summer Bash last year. Um, so thank you very much Bloomsbury for that. Uh, so this is about a young woman who is, um, so it's Amira, 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 she's um, a babysitter. So she's a young African-American woman and she's a babysitter. And then her employer, Alex, um, is a uh, kind of, is a middle-aged white woman who employs her. And Amira experiences this um, quite sort of racist incident um, in a grocery store when she's looking after Alex's young daughter and that kind of sets off sort of a chain of events and it's really about how um, it's really about race and particularly um, how middle class white liberals um, can be very racist so it's not just kind of like you're out and out really horrible vile violent you know awful racism it's the kind of more insidious 
things that you think is okay, almost like benevolent racism. So this is kind of shining a light on that. So it becomes, there's almost these two white characters who almost become like in a competition to out woke each other, you know, really demonstrate like how kind of liberal they are and not racist they are. But Amira, the only actual black person in that situation kind of gets caught in the middle and what she wants is sort of disregarded. So it was quite an interesting, um, Book. It really reminded me of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. So if you like that, you may well like this. Um, I think for me there was, there was something, and I can't really put my finger on it, but there was something that sort of stopped this being a, a four-star rating. I don't know what I don't know what that is, but, um, but I would still recommend it. It was a good book. Next one we have Our Stop by Laura Jane Williams. This one also um, was from the bookstagram of Summer Bash. So thank you, Avon, for sending me that. Um, and this is basically perfect for fans of The Flat Share, which is my favourite book of last year. It's just, it's a romance. It's a kind of a rom-com. I, it was just really easy. So this is the first book that I read of the month. And it was just easy and nice. And I mean, the ending was a little bit over the top for me, a little bit twee. But, you know, it's just, it does what it says in the tin. So this one is essentially about um, two characters who... Uh, who get the tube together but they've never actually met and then um, the guy what's his name Daniel this is really bad I've forgotten Daniel yes so Daniel sees Nadia on the train but she hasn't seen him and so he's basically developed like a crush on her and there's this kind of um, like a column in a newspaper where you can it's called misconnections where you can say it's basically like a um, what, what are they called you know, there's like ads you put in the paper, like for dating ads. It's that sort of thing where you just like, it's kind of like anonymous thing saying like, oh, I saw you and you're hot. Do you want to go for a drink? I'd clearly be shit at it. But it's that kind of principle. So he puts one of those in and Nadia doesn't realise it's about her. And so basically the whole thing is about missed connections. So they keep sort of missing each other and both kind of liking each other from afar and that sort of thing. Um, so it's just, yeah, it was a really quick and easy read. I'd recommend it if you're just looking for something really kind of comfortable and nice to, to sort of fall into. Um, so this next one, so the penultimate one I have, I think. No, it's not the penultimate one because there's two I don't have in front of me. This shows. I knew I'd forget it. I knew I'd have to write it down. So this one, four stars, is Saving Missy. Um, which is by Beth Mori. So this is um, not out yet. So this will be out, I think, on the 6th of February. And this is Beth Mori's debut. This was another one from the bookstagram of Summer Bash. This is a lovely book. So I gave this one four stars. This is basically about um, an older character called Missy. I think she's in her like late 70s. So late 70s, late 80s. And she she's just she's lonely so she's kind of um so her son and her grandson live in australia and um, she's estranged from her daughter and her husband um isn't around anymore and i think yeah so it's just that kind of loneliness that a lot of unfortunately a lot of elderly people can experience where you know they just don't have people around them and she meets um a couple of people in a park um a couple of other women in a park and it just sort of creates this sort of burgeoning friendship and it's really lovely it's this really sort of um lovely story about how community how important community is and how life-changing having a community around you can be like so where you know you're not related to these people you weren't friends with them before but they just live near you and you see them and because of that they're there for you when you need them and you can be there for them um, and it's, yeah, it's really lovely. So I've heard this one compared to Eleanor Oliphant, um, is completely fine, which, um, I can definitely see the comparison. There's something in the kind of loneliness there. Um, Missy to me wasn't kind of as quirky a character as Eleanor Oliphant. And actually what this reminded me of more was The Lido by Libby Page, which is really a book about community and how restorative that can be. Um, so if you like either of those books, you will probably like Saving Missy. So the two I'd forgotten about, and um, before we get to what was my favourite book of January, um, and I will put them up on the screen here as I don't have a copy. So one of them is George by Alex Gino, and um, that was another one that I listened to on Scribd. So that is, I think, a middle grade novel, and it's all about um, a trans child. So um, it's, George is her name, so she's been assigned male at birth, um, but she feels that she is a girl and she wants to you know become known as a girl 
Um, and so it's just kind of a story about that. She's sort of caught in, you know, her her family and her friends see her as a boy. Um, she wants to, they're doing a production of Charlotte's Web um, at her school and she really wants to play Charlotte, but everyone says she can't play Charlotte because she's a boy. Um, and so it kind of grows out from there. So it's actually a really lovely story um, to help people understand what it's like to be a trans person, to be a trans child. It's really accessible. Um, so yeah, I'd really recommend that one. That's a really quick and easy read. And then the other one um, is Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. So this was one that I was kindly lent by uh, my friend Ellie Barlow, um, who's Bookmad Barlow on Instagram, if you want to go follow her. And this is one that I feel like everyone has been raving about, at least in um, the people that I talk to on Instagram. So it is a kind of thriller set in Somerset. And there is uh, this kind of progressive school very sort of progressive value school and they are um they have been targeted by gunmen so it's kind of like a school shooting type scenario and I will admit so I think because I said everyone that I had sort of heard talk about it was like this is amazing like I couldn't put it down um, and so because of that, I obviously went in knowing that, having that like real hype. Um, so I think because of that, it wasn't as good as I was expecting. Um, for me, so I read last year Columbine by Dave Cullen, um, which is a non-fiction book about the Columbine shooting and goes into a lot of detail. And for me, the setup resonated too much with Columbine. Like it, it just sort of felt a bit odd to me to recreate it in that kind of way um it almost it was almost as if it was like a retelling of columbine only we, we don't need a fictional retelling of columbine um but over the time of the story it became clear that that was kind of a deliberate choice and columbine did start to become referenced in the story and in the acknowledgments the author said that she had also read columbine so it is but because of that, I think I was distracted. So I wasn't building the tension in the same way because I was sort of distracted by that. Um, but Rosamund Lupton is very good at building tension. And so there were then sort of, I think I'd kind of lost the sort of first third of the novel where I was a bit like, oh, this is Columbine. And then did get into it. And she is a real master of tension. So I did really start to get into it then. And there were just these characters. So there's um, Rafi and uh, Buzzy who were who are Syrian refugees who are at the school and I just love them Rafi particularly because you know they were into such a shit situation the whole situation for them was very very triggering of their experience of escaping from Syria and Rafi particularly was just such a beautiful character just so such like a loving person who was just so desperately trying to look after his little brother and look after his girlfriend and it's like ah oh! and I was just really stressed like he was oh gosh yeah so I won't spoil anything, um, but because of that, particularly those characters, that really bumped up the rating for me. So I gave that four stars, um, and I, you know, and I would recommend it. So that leaves me with my favourite book of the month, which was *Girl, Woman, Other* by Bernadine Evaristo. So you must have heard of this book, otherwise you've been living under a rock. <laughs> so it won the Booker yesterday, uh, yesterday last year. Um, joint winner with Margaret Atwood the Testaments which no doubt caused some controversy so this was the first black woman to win it I think um, and not only that she was winning it by writing unapologetically about black British women which is what makes this book so amazing um, and so then a lot of people including myself were a little bit disgruntled that she had to share the award with Margaret Atwood's The Testaments which had obviously been a very very hyped book um, but let's not dwell on that the point is that she did win and deservedly so. So um, I I found it really difficult to talk about this book. So I did a little review on Instagram, did a little review on Goodreads, and I find like I don't really know how to to talk to you about it. It's I think it's the sort of book you just sort of need to read. So it's made up of um, stories of these twelve different women, most of whom are Black British, and um, and so it just kind of talks about their lives and talk about their experience and they're in like sets of three so there's a kind of three women they'll be kind of related to each other in some way and then there'll be a different set of three but then at the end it's all kind of brought together so it's like a sort of tapestry so you sort of brings all these characters together in some way and 
it was just because you've got all these characters and they're all really they see I can't even really talk about it there's just there's a huge variety there they were all complex characters they all had different experiences and I think that's just what's really important about it is that it's writing about black British women um some of them lesbian some of them queer um rich poor like it's yeah it's just a whole variety of experience and I think we just don't see enough of characters like that in publishing today and then you've got 12 of them in one book so I think that's why I just can't even really articulate it because there's just so much in there I think it's a sort of book you have to read more than once um yeah I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop just being like oh, don't know read it so I gave it 4.5 stars I don't know what it was that stopped me giving it from five but don't read anything into that because that is it's a fantastic book and the ending in particular which I won't spoil was just kind of an extra thing that I didn't expect and just sort of left me feeling really like ah oh, I love that I really love the way that she chose to end the book um and it's also another book that is kind of so it doesn't really have like speech marks doesn't have like full stops and I opened it and was like what the hell is this why are writers doing this why do we have to experiment with like grammar why is that needed but actually I didn't even notice it after maybe like the first chapter or so so this is another one of the books like Normal People by Sally Rooney where you've done away with something which I considered to be quite important and quite integral um, and actually managed to totally get into it which just really shows how the writing is just speaking for itself there we are that was kind of a rambly account of why you should read Girl Woman Other that's it um, I've rambled for quite some time. I think next month I might try doing like mid month wrap up so that we do shorter videos because that was quite a lot to get through. Um, tell me about your January. What did you read in January? What was your favorite book? Anything that you'd recommend? If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, please do give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe, and I will see you again soon for another video. Bye.